Hey everyone, welcome to this week's episode of Chatting the Pictures. I'm Kara Finnegan. I'm a writer, teacher, and photography historian. And I'm Michael Shaw, the publisher of Reading the Pictures. So we are back again this week with our three segments, the news, the look, the pick. Um, and one of the things that I think, Michael, you and I have been figuring out as we've adapted to this new segment structure is there's a little blurring of the lines sometimes in terms of what, uh, what segment we think a, a great photo of the week might fit into. So um, I think that's a part of the fun of of working on this project with you is sometimes we need to have conversations about what we're actually looking at, right? Absolutely. And maybe sometimes um, a great image uh, hits all of the, all the marks. So, you know, maybe we have a, you know, a good problem there. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> And that is a nice, very smooth uh, segue into our first segment uh, of the week, which is the news. And just as a reminder for folks who might be tuning in to the first time um, or for the first time, uh, when we talk about uh, this segment, what we're interested in is how news photos tell a story. Um, how do we understand the information uh, in a news photo as illuminating something about the news itself? And this week, uh, what's interesting about our selection for news is that it's it's something that absolutely made news this week for certain, but it's also an image that we can talk about for its uh, uh, really important and interesting visual qualities, as well as its obvious, uh, obviously kind of broader um, political and let's be clear, commercial components, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, it, it just very briefly, uh, you know, there's was so much talk about this uh, that it, it people, uh, um, a lot of people weren't even thinking about the campaign as uh, uh, in terms of the publicity angle. It just seemed like it became an object of political culture, which I think is exactly what Nike was going for. And I think I saw a statistic at one point that said that you know, they generated $43 million worth of free advertising uh, in, the, in the first week. And, and that's, that's aside from the social cred and the fact that um, uh, Kaepernick uh, fits very nicely into the um, uh, Nike's demographic for their products. So um, pretty brilliant that it becomes indistinguishable, in fact, uh, from a, um, you know, a, a, a news or a political image. Yeah, I mean, if we had a segment called the ad, right, they would blur very uh, <laughs> seamlessly uh, into one another, right? Um, and, you know, it's great. just to kind of give you a sense of the political, cultural, you know, commercial components, all of this, uh, me as somebody who uh, is not a super rabid NFL fan, um, uh, but who pays attention to these things and obviously has been very interested in the Colin Kaepernick story uh, and the broader context in which that's unfolded over time. Uh, one of my first thoughts uh, would Nike make uh, all the uniforms for the NFL, right? So if I'm thinking about that, uh, the, the political, cultural, commercial components of an image like this, uh, imagine what it's doing uh, and the impact it's having uh, for people who have a much deeper investment in particularly the uh, commercial sports angle, uh, certainly than I do. Um, yeah. But let's talk about this image as an image because it's really, really compelling. Yeah. Well, one thing to say right off the bat, though, is that, you know, over the years I've written about um, advertising images and then I'll write about mostly about news images and got a lot of criticism early on that, uh, because they're really, you know, very different, not just in um, content, but also in a way, you, you know, it's the what advertising people are visual communication ninjas in terms of um, really you know, shaping and manipulating an image, whereas a news photographer, as brilliant as they are, you know, it's just left to, you know, cap capturing events. And so um, the, I think there's some really fascinating moves that are being made in this. Um, one would be uh, like just the whole bodily aspect because Kaepernick is known for, and people like, especially fans, you know, pick up these kinds of, um, 
you know, ways of re referencing or relating to him, you know, people uh, are very familiar with his body. They're very familiar with his arm. They're very familiar at this point, more familiar with his knee. And so, and, and of course, people are very familiar with his hair and the Afro, which really also codes for politics and, you know, to some extent also militancy. And now he's just a face. Yeah, yeah. And and isn't it interesting the way that face is put in relationship to us, the viewers? So one of the things that I um, uh, noticed, and uh, I'll give a little preview to our next photos, is this week it's all about the eyes uh, for me in terms of the photos we're looking uh, at. And this photo in particular nice. uh, is really, you know, he's meeting our gaze and, you know, sometimes people who write about visual communication call this a, a demand image where the subject of the photo is looking right back at you, right, meeting your gaze one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. And that is seen as a demand image because it's it suggests that the subject has something that they are demanding of you or that they're asking you to look at or think about or that and that they're participating in this moment of visual exchange with you. And to me, the demand image in this case is really interesting because Kaepernick's bodily activities, as you pointed out, have been uh, treated by a lot of people who are opposed to them as extremely problematic because they are seen as aggressive and con confrontational, right, and militant. And the gaze that we have here, even though it's this very straight up demand image, is a kind of a softer gaze, a more serene gaze. It's a gaze that's asking to uh, for us to kind of meet on the same plane. And I think that's really interesting. So that he is, as you say, the, the image uh, reduces him to a face, but it's also kind of putting a face in a way on a person that we haven't quite seen before, at least in the, in the framing of, in this kind of framing of him as this con, controversial or confrontational figure. Uh-huh. And I think that there's even another level then uh, and in terms of like the uh, subliminal aspect of this that um, the designers were going for. And I was studying this and studying this and I like what I, I went to the dictionary and looked up the word mandala. And uh, I think the, the definition said chiefly characterized by a concentric configuration of geometric shapes, each of which uh, contains an image of a deity or an attribute of a deity. I don't know if I, I go that far in terms of you know the deity aspect, but when you start to think about the uh, the number how how whole this is, and then you start to think of derivatives of that wholesomeness and holistic. But you've got the face is round, the eyes are round, the Fu Manchu is round. So you've got these like layering of concentric circles that, you know, I mean, yeah, literally take the yeah. edge off of them. And, it, and I do think at some, you know, at, at a more kind of, uh, I don't know, not spiritual level, but this this kind of deeper level, you know, that that shape has a lot of power to it. And it's also, I think that's, that's really interesting. I hadn't thought about it uh, in the sense of uh, just symmetry, but mm -hmm. I think you're right. And you get, and then cutting across that symmetry is the text, which, you know, if we just had this image of Kaepernick's face and it said, just do it, and that's all we had, that would be, I think, very compelling and interesting. But the text is essentially Nike's way of saying, here's why. Right. Here's why he's <laughs> right. And therefore, there, and, yeah. And so, and and because it's cutting across his nose, which I think is interesting, because a lot of guys who play really full contact sports have a kind of beat up, maybe wide asymmetrical nose from the various you know times they've been uh, nailed in the face. But I think having that text across his nose, literally underscoring his eyes, uh, 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 tells uh -huh. you something too. So that to read the text, you also have to look into his eyes. Yes. Yes. And then when you combine it with that symmetry you were talking about, um, yeah, it's um, uh, this ad's probably going to win a lot of uh, what are the awards for the advertising agencies? Clearance? Two of a lot of those. Yeah, yeah. Maybe, yeah. I don't know what's in his eyes too. He, the reflection. They, I'm sure they thought about that and whatever he's looking at. If you blow this thing up, is very significant. And the fact that there's like two, so it's binary, and you know, placed into like black and white. And the, I mean, I. I the, this stuff gets really complex, like above my pay grade. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, and I think too, when you look at the, if you look at the ad that they released in conjunction that he is narrating, he's he's kind of the the narrator talking ahead of the ad, and then the ad really is tapping into clearly the values that Nike's trying wanting to um, celebrate and sell. Right. To be clear. Um, it amplifies this as well. So you have not only like uh, Kaepernick's image, but then there's elaboration in the in the campaign itself on what does that mean for, you know, the disabled kid who wants to be a wrestler? What does that mean for a young uh, African-American, you know, girl in Compton who grows up to be Serena Williams, right? They're doing a number of different things with the ad that all kind of tie into this. Um, uh, as well. So yeah, so news and then a lot of other stuff too, right? Yep. So let's move on a little bit about looking already, but let's move on uh, to our next segment and talk about the look. And here is, uh, the, this is a segment where we really are interested in how news photos are making the best use of artistry and style. So when you can't do what the advertiser folks do and you know perfectly stage everything and get it exactly the way you want it and manipulate it ad nauseum, when you're capturing a moment, how do you do that? Um, what are, how are the best photos pushing the visual boundaries to do that? So Michael, do you wanna give us um, a little bit of background and, and caption info on this photo? Yeah, the photo was taken by uh, M. Scott Mahaskey, uh, another photographer I really admire. He shoots for Politico. Uh, and um, this is the comment, I think from his tweet, it says Infowar, Infowars Alex Jones yells at Twitter CEO Jack Dorsey as he left the Senate hearing on foreign, ele foreign electioneering on social media. Jones, known for spreading baseless conspiracy theories, alleges that tech companies are biased against conservatives. Um, just something uh, quick is that there was two hearings that um, Dorsey uh, was part of yesterday and I think that the media and at least this photograph kind of conflates the two, but one was pretty legitimate. Um, it was uh, the um, Senate Intelligence Committee talking about foreign interference in US elections, um, interviewed uh, Dorsey and also um, Sandberg from Facebook. And then there was a second uh, hearing which was much more political and uh, heavy handed, the House Energy Committee and Commerce um, or, or Energy and Commerce Committee uh, held a hearing um, on anti-conservative bias and um, the shadow banning of Republicans on social media, and particularly Twitter. So the kind of crazy, almost farcical nature of this photograph, I think is probably more reflective of that second hearing. Um, right, and then Jones staged kind of a thing where, you know, he was, he's, famously been banned from some social media sites and he was suspended from Twitter. And he staged this thing where he said, I'm going to come and confront my accusers. And he live streamed, I guess, parts of it. Right. And then you see that kind of condensed here. And he so, got into it with Rubio in the hallway yeah, and that got live yeah, streamed. Blah, 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 right. Blah, blah. So he essentially worked very hard to make this a spectacle uh, that was about him. Make it an info war. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. Not surprisingly. Yeah. Um, so, so the look of this photo, Michael. What are what are um, what are some things we see? How is this photo organizing all of this crazy stuff that was happening? Well, I, the, the, this picture to me, uh, more than any I've seen recently, just speaks to the circus that uh, social media has become, and. Um, a little bit of like also how that world has been crashing the, the hill this, this week and not just in this hearing, but also in the, um, the uh, Supreme Court Kavanaugh hearings. Um, and it, to me, this looks like literally like the circus. You've got uh, Dorsey, who's a really kind of eccentric figure and, he, and people were talking about this up collar that he's wearing and is he Dracula or is that like the Fonz or you know, and he looks a little like Mandrake, the magician with that beard. And then you have uh, uh, Jones himself, who looks sort of like a lion. And and this guy, the super tall guy in the middle is kind of keeping him apart. Uh, you know, it's almost like maybe also the beginning of a pri prize fight, you know, or the way off or something. But, but he's like the world's tallest man. Uh, then you've got this, <laughs> that off to the far right, if you see that like crazy selfie stick, 
That was that conspiracy th theorist woman, if you watched some of the video, who got tossed out of the hearings. Oh, right. and, and while she got tossed out, this Republican congressman, who's a, a professional auctioneer, started doing like calls for, for you know, for, for bids, which, you know, selling off the Congress, you know, is like uh, seemed to be also like crazy ironic. So she's in there with her hand. I mean, this is, and then someone's live streaming the whole thing or, or at least shooting it for, you know, you'd think perhaps social media. It, it, it's, it shows like the breakdown between, you know, like art, art and life. It, part of I, the circus, I love the circus. I'm kind of just blown away by your whole thing about the lion and the, you know, the, the, the world's tallest man and, and the magician. <laughs> I love that. But, you know, and, and what's really interesting about that is that is that it sort of dovetails with my sort of with my oddball reading of this image and the look of it, which is um, uh, if you kind of go from the front left of the image uh, where uh, with the police officer kind of looking back over his shoulder, like, what is this crazy mess happening back <laughs> here? And then you get this kind of really lovely diagonal line that cuts back to the back right, you know, more the deeper back right corner uh -huh. of the photo where you have Jones, you know, doing the whole, oh, hey, kind of thing. Like, to me, it also suggests that, you know, that, that, that we have this world of order and then there's all this chaos behind it. But guess uh, what? Who's caused the chaos? The guy that's made us all addicted to our cell phones, which is Dorsey, right? So so yeah. it's this kind of, it's the circus of not just his own creation, right? That's, that's overstating it, but it's the circus that has been created by this proliferation of the very technologies that, um, uh, you know, we're, you know, the ones that are designed to save us are the ones that are going to be our downfall in a way. And so, yeah. you know, from the, the hand with the smartphone and then holding the camera and then the, the, the pink selfie stick that you talked about and the people behind, and then of course the television cameras. So you get the sense of like, it is a circus. I love that. And it's a media circus. And there's also this, there's a kind of, I don't want to call it, maybe call it the thin blue line, but there is this kind of, presence of order uh and you just get the impression that there's just not a whole lot that guy can do about what's going on back there uh-huh uh -huh. uh, that's brilliant uh, this this it's also so much it, this to me also this photo just reads it's so much about gender this is this has, just has a lot to say about men and masculinity wow. and confrontation culture um and uh, the 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 way that kind of men move their bodies in public space, I think, is is performed a little bit here as well. There's the sense of you know decorum and breaking decorum. Um, uh, you know, Jones's posture is view you know could be viewed as assertive by certainly by people who might support him. Mm -hmm. But if you put a woman in that position, it, that same posture might be viewed oh, as yeah. hysterical or crazy, right? Yeah. So there's yeah. there's a gender component uh, to the circus as well. You know, the world's tallest man, <laughs> uh, for sure. Um, Shall we move on from the circus to uh, again another, as circus? another spectacle that was very much um, news and uh, and so this is the last segment of uh, our episode and this is the segment we call the pick where uh, we ask what makes a photo a good editorial choice or at least an interesting editorial choice uh, among a variety of options that you might have uh, from photographers who, who are covering an event. So what is it that gives certain photos uh, either an editorial, track, uh, editorial traction or a public traction? And uh, this photo certainly got both of those uh, in the last couple of days, didn't they, or didn't it? Yeah, you could call this photo, um, you know, one of, those, one of those pictures that wins the internet. Um, the photo was taken by Andy Harnick for the uh, Associated Press, and the uh, caption, if anyone needs to <laughs> hear it, is um, Fred Gutenberg, the father of Jamie Gutenberg, who was killed in the shooting in Parkland, Florida, left, tries to shake hands with um, Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh, right during a lunch break. Kavanaugh did not shake his hand. Um, 
Talk about getting the shot. Uh, it, it, when you have the entire like cream of the crop of the, of the DC press corps uh, shooting a marquee um, hearing like this, the, no the nomination of a Supreme Court justice, especially one this critical and important, um, you know, every single second is being documented, every single direct in every, every single direction. Uh, and so when you get one shot that just jumps out and, and captures people's interest and fascination and editor's interest, like this one above the others, you really have to, you know, say why, you know, there, uh, and this particular engagement between these two was also shot, not just vi videoed and photographed from every possible angle, from every millisecond of it. So, so the question, I guess I'll question for you, uh, Kara, I have some thoughts about it myself is like, why this one? Yeah. Why this frame? I think for me, there's two things. Um, one is the nature of the event, and then one is related to the the quality of what's in the frame itself. So the nature of the event, these events are so heavily scripted, so heavily covered, um, as you said, by literally everyone from every angle, that any moment where something happens that is unexpected or unusual is going to be significant because you go to these kinds of things, I'm sure as a photojournalist, when you're covering them, you know they're going to be a spectacle, but kind of a predictable one. People will, you know, uh, uh, senators will posture, the uh, the nominee will or will not uh, uh, um, elaborate, you know, like you sort of know how this is all gonna go and how it's gonna look. And so this unexpected moment um, is something that's just going to stand out because it's unexpected. Um, in the context of the image itself, yes. to me, it just, it's the, it's the eye line. Again, I've mentioned earlier, I feel like this episode is all about the eyes and mm -hmm. it's, it's the visual relationship that, the, that Andy Harnett captures this moment, this fleeting moment between uh, the nominee on the right, who's being approached by someone that he doesn't yet know who this person is. This person is literally asking something of him, extending an offering, uh, an interaction. And Gutenberg's face is so earnest and open. And Kavanaugh's is not. And it's that split second instance of um, something happening is unusual and, and Harnick just caught it, right? Yeah, what's what, really important to, to point out it, when you're talking about news photographs, we don't get a chance to mention this, is that, you know, I mean, obviously photographs are instants in time. They're these little slices of life. And what you have to be aware of and very wary about when you're talking about a photograph is how representative that instant is to, you know, what actually the, the larger reality. And that's why a lot of times I'll go back and look at the video before I make some kind of assertion about what's happening in a single frame. And this is the kind of photograph that, you know, if things are moving fast and someone had been just off of Gutenberg's right shoulder and, um, and you know, he, uh, there was some prompt by the um, chairman to like get to some other room or something or other, there'd be so many footnotes or caveats to this image. But in this case, the moment in time seemed to, even though the White House said that you know that, and a, and a guy comes in really quickly to kind of um, uh, separate Gutenberg, and it's all happening in an instant. Even though the White House is saying he didn't quite know who this guy was, then we we find out that Diane Feinstein had introduced Gutenberg, and he stands at most of these events, and he's fairly well known. And you can and you can tell from the video that um, Kavanaugh really did. It seemed like Calvin and I heard the introduction and did make contact with him. So it feels like uh, the photograph actually is true. So I, th I think that's a really important, you know, point to make when a lot of these images, you know, are you're just guessing. Okay. So yes, but do you? If we didn't have the caption, what would you make of this photo? Because the caption says he did not shake his hand. Well, I, hard question for me to answer because I like saw so much media on it. Um, uh, so, 
but I did watch the video. In fact, I, I went and I, and yeah. I watched different videos and lo looked at a lot of images before I could trust this photograph. And then, so, so I, I did through that other information, but I, again, I think when we talk about veracity of news and truth and how much people trust the news, I, th I think it, I think it is a little dangerous and we, you know, like we are right now, kind of going the extra mile in terms of, you know, kind of establishing the, you know, the, the, the context and the, you know, and, and the, the reality of it. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess, so I, I looked at the video and I don't necessarily have a different read. And in, in other words, I don't think that this photo is a cheap shot at all. I don't think that the photo, uh, I think that the photo represents a moment that happened. Uh, and, and, and again, that to me, that moment is not so much what happened in the second before or after the the, sh the hand was offered for the handshake and then uh, and, and it was you know rejected or turned away from. Um, to me, it's that moment of visual engagement, right? Of like, I am here to talk to you or to introduce myself to you as a person who's had this experience happen. You're being asked to comment on that experience in your hearing. You do not seem to have an interest in hearing me. You know, like that moment, I'm not denying all of that moment, but I do also think that in the bigger picture of, um, in the bigger picture of thinking about like why this image is the pick, it was an easy image to, kind of distilled down to um, Kavanaugh's refusal to do other things too, right? So it becomes, I think, it becomes a personal rejection. You can interpret it as a personal rejection and like, oh my God, you know, like, is he not a human? Does he not even want to shake the hand of this man who's lost his daughter? Yeah, they, make that interpretation. Yeah, they, these but, images, these, these images do end up representing a larger truth, even if right, they, but then they also in a second, yeah. in a moment. But I mean, but then they also become this bigger frame of, you know, the nominee not wanting to say a lot of other things. So I guess for me, what makes this pick really interestingly problematic and not in a bad way, I want to be clear, is that it allows for these multiple interpretations, um, some of which can be tied to how you might want to interpret Kavanaugh personally in this moment, and some of which can be tied to the larger scene but they're all tied to this idea of the unexpected, you know? Um, so, you know, if Kavanaugh had reached out and shaken his hand, would that have been less expected, you know? But it gets at like, it gets at the artifice of the whole, you know, situation and how much this stuff is an exercise and a charade. It's like really what, what's, the, the other thing that's amazing about the photograph is it just to, you know, piggybacking on what you're saying is that it, it it's his facial expression. You know, the body language here is amazing. It's not just refusing the, um, you know, the 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 reach, but it's like how he holds his hands in tight and touching his button, like you know, it's such a kind of corporate move. You know, it's how like an executive like enters and exits a room for a big meeting. You know, but but even more than that, it's the face because. Here he is caught off guard. Here he is, um, you know, he's he's dropped the mask, and that's what I think. That's what the photograph is, or just another way to, you know, to to you know to get at it. Yeah. So I mean, as a pick, this is really interesting because you could say, well, is this really like should a rejected handshake, even in a context where you would hope that somebody would engage in an interpersonal interaction with a man who's lost his daughter and who has uh, beliefs that um, uh, that the loss of his daughter is related to a, a broader structure that needs to be changed, right? Um, uh, is it, just, you know, if you reduce it to, to that, then it becomes kind of like, oh, well, then it's just the news photo of, you know, it's the dramatic interpersonal photo of the week and we can ignore it. But if you think about it in this broader context, it, it, it you know, I think comes to mean something bigger. Um, um, so anyway, I think, you know, <laughs> to the extent that I've hijacked this conversation, um, uh, what I hope that we're, we're getting at here a little bit is the sense that um, the editorial pick 
can really go a lot of different ways, right? And it can mean a lot of different things. Um, and, you know, 20 years from now, what will this photo represent um, if Brett Kavanaugh is on the Supreme Court? That's another interesting question. Especially if they overturn Roe versus Wade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, right? So what is that, how does that come to mean later? Or, 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 or uh, make, strengthen the Second Amendment, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like, like who, who's gonna, uh, who's gonna have the power in that situation to win? Um, so, any wrap up, final wrap up things you want to say about our week of eyes? <laughs> no, I mean, the, the week produced a, a very powerful imagery, and uh, I don't know that there's a lot of tension in the culture right now, and um, this uh, opposition of forces moving right into the the hearing room in Capitol Hill. So I'd expect the images are going to be pretty gristy going forward. Yeah. Yeah. That's not going to change anytime soon for sure. Um, so uh, that'll wrap us up for this week. And um, we hope people hang around next time. Uh, where can people find us, Michael? Uh, reading the pictures, uh, org, um, on Instagram, reading the pictures and on Twitter, reading the pics. Look for you there. All right, and uh, we will see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.